the risk of frailty um, mm. as we get into ketosis and as we consider fasting, especially for a population who is older, right? Where you know, a single fall can mean a really down, downward spiral. And so how do you balance kind of the body composition changes that come with the ketogenic diet and with fasting um, with the, that risk of losing too much weight? Yeah, this is really good because a lot of people get introduced to a ketogenic diet or to intermittent fasting because they want to lose weight. Now, fortunately, you're talking to somebody that's never tried to lose weight. I've never wanted to lose weight. I've always been, you know, just like you, I'm a thinner body type and I want to build muscle. Um, and so I'm, I'm lifting weights for me personally, six days a week uh, because I love lifting weights and I love maintaining my muscle mass. And so you can practice intermittent fasting and also maintain, if not gain, healthy muscle weight. Because ultimately, when it comes to weight and it comes to frailty, we don't want just bad weight. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are skinny fat. What that means is that, you know, you look at them with clothes on and they seem thin, but they have a high percentage of body fat. And that extra body fat, particularly visceral fat that's around their organs, organs is actually increasing the, the fat cells themselves are triggering releases of cytokines. They actually um, have different inflammatory compounds that are being released, driving up overall systemic inflammation throughout the system. So we want healthy weight. Healthy weight is going to be lean body tissue. You need a certain percentage of body fat. Um, but uh, beyond that, you want healthy bone tissue. You want healthy muscle tissue. So here's what I recommend. I would recommend everybody should be doing a minimum 12 hour overnight fast. That means you finish your your dinner at let's say 7 p.m. You don't eat anything with calories until let's say 7 a.m. the next morning. So you might drink herbal tea or something like that's fine. Um, but you know, you, you give yourself at least 12 hours. And ideally what I like to see is 14, 16 hour fast, somewhere in that range. Um, intermittent fast where you're, again, you're drinking non-caloric beverages, black coffee, herbal teas, things like that. Fine. Uh, water in general, water with lemon. Um, all that's totally fine. Doesn't break your fast, but you're, you're reducing or not consuming calories during that fasting window and you're eating your meals in let's say a six, eight or 10 hour eating window. Okay. And so a good place to start would be like a 10 hour eating window. You eat three meals, let's say eight, a.m. to 6 p.m. You eat three meals. In each meal, I recommend getting at least 30 grams of protein. Getting enough protein is going to help maintain your lean body tissue. When you, and will you give protein, our audience uh, just some examples of what, what does that look like? Like how many eggs, how much of like meat, animal product, what does that look like on a plate? Yeah. So with eggs, eggs are uh, are high protein, high fat, and there's usually about six grams of protein per egg. So, you know, if you're doing eggs, it'd be about five eggs, right? If that's all you were eating was, let's say, scrambled eggs or something like that. Basically five eggs in that case, right? Now you could also do like, let's say some turkey bacon, ideally, you know, all your animal products. I, I'm a huge advocate of getting them organic as much as possible, yes. uh, grass-fed, pasture-raised if you can do it. Um, something along those lines. Or, you know, a, a, another good source is Greek yogurt, right? Some unsweetened, you know, don't get it with the sugar added. Like some unsweetened Greek yogurt is a great protein source, high in protein. So you might have something like that on the side with a few berries on it. Um, or even like like one of my favorite snacks is, is organic Greek yogurt with um, a sweetened protein powder, like a collagen protein that I'll actually just sprinkle in there and it's flavored with stevia and I just kind of mix that up. Tastes great, right? And it's high protein. So something along those lines um, is kind of what you're looking at. And most people are not getting enough protein. They're not consuming that, that level of protein in their meals. And so you want to aim for about 30 grams of protein. Roughly, that's going to hit your leucine threshold. Now you have these branched chain amino acids, leucine, valine, and isoleucine. And leucine is the most critical one when it comes to maintaining lean body tissue. So you want to stimulate your lutein threshold in order to gain lean body mass. Um, you know, roughly two to three times a day uh, is, 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 is great. And you need roughly the average individual, depending on your weight, is going to need somewhere between two to four grams of leucine. So if you're light, if you're under 120 pounds, you might get away with 20 to 25 grams of protein. Um, you know, 120 to let's say 170 pounds, 30 grams of protein. 
um, up over that. You might even need a little bit more. Depends on your lean body mass, though. Right? Uh, you're probably fine even with 30 grams of protein, depending on how much strength training, things like that that you're doing. So if you do the, the protein, and then I recommend adding in some healthy fats, and usually these foods contain, a lot of protein foods contain fats, healthy fats. And so you want somewhere between 15 to, let's say, 30 grams or so of healthy fat in the meal. Some people do great. Like I can eat a high fat, high protein meal and feel great. Other people, maybe they have sluggish bile flow. Bile is a digestive juice produced by the liver and then stored in the gallbladder that's needed to emulsify the fats, help break them down and metabolize them. If you don't have good bile flow, which is not uncommon, um, you may struggle when you consume a higher fat diet. So I, I, that's why I recommend 15 to 30 grams. From my experience, most people can do fine with 15 grams, even if they don't have a gallbladder, even if, you know, they have real sluggish bile, liver flow. Um, you know, so you can you might start there and then you might try to increase, kind of find where your threshold is, how much you can get away with, with these fats as far as in a meal, right? You got, you have to decide for yourself because this is personalized nutrition. You got to kind of figure it out. Um, but something along those lines and a healthy fat sources are going to be from our grass fed animal products they are going to be coming from extra virgin, high polyphenol, extra virgin olive oil, avocados, uh, coconut oil, uh, grass fed butter, right? Things like that. That's going to be, you know, even nuts and seeds to a degree can, can provide some healthy fats. So, um, so that's basically eggs, like I mentioned earlier. So, um, that's going to be where those healthy fats come in. And then you want a lot of colors in your meals. So I recommend high phytonutrient rich fruits and vegetables. And the way to do that is kind of get a variety of colors. I like to have reds, purples, right? You got purple onions, red cabbage, right? Things like that. Reds, tomatoes, be red bell peppers, right? You get there's try to get a lot of colors in in your meal and you round it out with that. So you've prioritized around the protein. You think, okay, what's my protein source? How do, what do I need to do to get the 30 grams? Right? What's my fat source? Oftentimes, again, could be the same as the protein source, right? Kind of figuring out where your fat threshold is. And then how do I just get as much colors into my, my diet as possible, right? And so if you do that, you do that, you know, with two to three meals a day, um, you're going to feel very, you're going to feel very satiated. When you hit that protein and you hit the, get the right amount of fat, you're going to feel satiated. You're not going to feel hungry. You're not going to have the cravings throughout the day. Um, you feel a lot better. Now, obviously, if you were to eat a lot of processed sugar, you tack in, you know, you eat a handful of cookies along with your, your meal, you might have more cravings. So stick with the real foods, right? As much as possible. That's going to be key there. And that's going to help stabilize your blood sugar, reduce cravings, going to make fasting significantly easier. Another thing is between meals, um, hydrating your body well, right? And especially, you know, we're talking having this conversation right now in the winter, a lot of people not hydrating well. Um, you know, as, as the weather gets cooler. So try to make sure between meals, you're hydrating. I, I recommend not drinking a whole lot with your meal, maybe enough to take a little bit of supplements if you're taking supplements, but outside of that, let the fruits and vegetables be the hydration that you're consuming. And when you consume a lot of water with your meal, you can water down your stomach acid. You can dilute your stomach acid and affect your digestion. But in between meals, let's say starting like an hour after a meal, you want to be hydrating well, staying well hydrated. It's going to reduce cravings, going to help you feel more mentally clear, functioning well. You want things moving through your body like, like a river, not like a stagnant pond, right? And keeping all your drainage pathways working well. So water is key for that. So anyways, this is kind of how you set up your meal. And then to prevent against frailty, and also, this is also amazing just for your brain as well, strength training. So doing strength training regularly. I recommend three to four days a week of doing st structured resistance training. Okay. And nowadays, most people are living near a gym that has equipment that um, takes the load off, right? It's not free weights. It's not dangerous, Nautilus style equipment. There's trainers there that can usually, they'll give you even like a free trial. They can show you how to do these things. But I recommend doing two upper body days, two lower body days a week, ideally, right? Three to four days a week, you might do, you know, upper, lower, upper, um, or a full body even. Um, give yourself a day off, at least one day off for that particular muscle group. So a good, a good routine would be Monday, you do upper body and you're doing push pull exercises. What that means is something that you're pushing, like an overhead press or a or kind of a push press type exercise. That's going to work more of the front or anterior musculature. And then a pull exercise, 
It could be like a row, for example. Rows are phenomenal exercises. That's going to work the pull exercise, or I'm sorry, the um, the posterior or uh, the, your back in a sense. And so that's going to work that musculature. And then Tuesday, you're doing legs and also your core. So you might do squats, deadlifts. And I know that for average person out there that, you know, the average seven-year-old woman that's never done resistance training, she hears she hears deadlifts and she thinks that's going to kill me. But it's actually one of the best things for preserving, giving you longevity. And I'm telling you, you can do these exercises. And so our ancestors, they all, I mean, if you go to any of the, anywhere where, you know, outside of first world countries, third world countries where people are older, they're doing deadlifts every single day. They're not doing structured deadlifts. They're just doing it to pick things up right on a regular basis. And so you've got to, these are exercises that are so powerful for stimulating lean body mass and also your muscles when they're being stressed like this, they release something called myokines. And these myokines go up into the brain and they increase that BDNF, right? And we talked about that. It's like miracle growth for the brain. So really powerful. So I recommend squats, deadlifts, lunges, things like that. Work with a trainer. If you're really concerned, if, if anything that I just said there like makes you fearful or you think, or if your mind shut down, like I'm definitely not doing that, just get a trainer that's there, have them show you a routine uh, that, and, and let them know that your number one priority is not getting injured, right? Uh, injury prevention, number two is building lean body tissue. So that, and they'll help kind of design something for you. So I'm curious but it's what so you powerful. think of maybe like a Pilates or a yoga class, or even there, I, I, like I went to a power fusion class at my yoga studio the other yeah. day. And there were some small weights, some like two pound weights that we used and that w had an instructor. And it was also the cost was a lot lower because it's in a group setting. Do you have any thoughts about using something like that for strength training? Definitely. I mean, anything's better than nothing. So even using body weight, I think is great, right? So doing body weight, uh, fantastic, great way to start. I just want you doing resistance training. That's the key. That's going to help preserve your lean body mass. If you're worried about losing too much weight, number one thing you could be doing is resistance training. Number two, increasing protein, protein levels. And then number three, prioritizing good sleep because sleep is really where, when you heal and regenerate. And when you sleep well, you're going to produce the kind of hormones, human growth hormone, uh, testosterone that really help with preserving, maintaining lean body tissue. So super key, um, really focus in on that. Um, and then that's a way that you can actually, as you do this, you will notice, and, and uh, we talked about the nutrition principles with getting the right protein and fat. For a lot of people, they notice that they're not really all that hungry and they may yeah. even go down to two meals a day and feel great with that in a condensed eating window. I just did a, a call with a lady, uh, you know, she's, you know, in this demographic over 70 she told me she's doing eating two meals a day now. She, I had her eating three and she's like, I just am not hungry, not that hungry. So she's eating at 12 o'clock and five o'clock, right? And it's great. And so we know that her body's getting into ketosis because that's why she's not hungry and only doing two meals a day. It's a sign because she's metabolically flexible. Her body's good at burning fat for fuel. She told me her energy is significantly better. Brain fundamental clarity is significantly better. And so th these are things that definitely can be done. The key again is resistance training, dialing in those macronutrients, really finding out, you know, getting the right amount of protein, healthy fats, um, you know, getting a lot of those phytonutrient rich vegetables. And then as the cravings reduce and the overall appetite reduces, you can kind of condense that eating window a little bit more so you get even more benefits from the ketones. Mm -hmm.